Good evening, and welcome to another one of my episodes of A Verse a Day Keeps Islam Away. Today I'm actually going to talk about, real quickly, about logic. Logic in Islam. First of all, every single time I try to read a verse, or I try to read an ayah, or a surah, surah, I am told that you are not allowed, or not really not allowed, no one is capable of actually reading classical Quranic Arabic. Well, apart from the fact that it's a language that's been long dead since the 7th century, um, <clears throat> it's only read in the Quran. But apart from that, uh, the only way to really understand it is by using other books such as Al-Hadith, Al-Tafsir, Asira, and other scholarly books. So now here's my question to you, my fellow brother Muslims. Al-Quran Al-Kareem, this in its entirety is the work of God. Allah wrote every single wor word in here. Every Fatha, every Dhamma, every Kasra, those are all accent marks. Um, Every single um, thing in here is written or munazzal, revealed by Allah. So therefore, this is the only book that is actually the word of Allah. Are you with me this far? Now, when you say that no one is able to understand classical Quranic Arabic, which to a certain degree I... I can almost agree to that because no one speaks this way and I would love to see a single person speaking this way but this is almost like speaking on um, the the um, uh, Canterbury Tales type of English for Geoffrey Chaucer um, <clears throat> but anyway therefore there have been other books created such as Al Tafsir Al Tafsir is the explanation and the explanation what it really does is it takes every single verse, it breaks it down word for word for word. It breaks it down by prepositions, by commas, by apostrophes, by semicolons, and it gives you a tafsir, an explanation as to why Allah gave that exact word. Now, here's my question to you. Who gave you or who gave those people the authority or the ilham the, uh, <clears throat> the inspiration to really know what Allah was thinking whenever he uh, revealed the Quran. So, obviously, at tafsir which there's hundreds of them, uh, depending on whoever deciphered Al-Quran, wrote, every single one of them is written by man. Now, also, let's look at the Hadith. The Hadith is a, is a supplement to Al-Quran. A hadith is all the sayings, the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad, of his um, concubines, his entourage, his uh, khalifat. Um, again, that was not written by Allah. That is written by man. How about a seerah, the way Muhammad lived? Was that written by Allah? Did Allah um, was Allah a biographer of the way that Muhammad led his life? I really don't think so. So, in essence, what I'm hearing right now is, in Islam, you have this holy, wonderful, miraculous book called Al-Qur'an. However, no one can understand it. Therefore, you must resort to Al-Hadith, which is narrations of what people around that time said. Al-Tafsir, which is what people have translated every word in the Qur'an to be and Al-Sirah, which is the way that the Muh Muhammad, the Prophet and the subsequent Al-Dar, the people of the house, have lived their lives. Do you not see a problem with that? Islam is therefore not even following the original Qur'an that Muhammad had set forth for every single one of his followers. Muhammad, during the time of Muhammad, he did not have al-Tafsir. He did not have al-Hadith. 
He did not have a seerah. He did not have any other scholarly books. He only had Al-Qur'an to also to supplement al Torah, the Torah, and Al-Injil, the Gospel. It was supposed to be a completion to the former books, hence calling them the people of the book. Um, so essentially, Islam should only be Al-Qur'an, the Torah, and the Gospel, together. That's what Islam should be. And not this newly created, by man, Al-Tafsir, Al-Sira, Al-Hadith, and other scholarly books. That's all I have to say for today. I'll see you again soon. Bye.